Squared Spotlight Art Talks highlight member and friend artists of all ages and experiences. This week's talk features Monstro Chica. Hey everyone, this is Any Squared Spotlight, and this week our friend Monsieur Chica, is, and who is also known as uh, Naomi Martinez, is going to give the talk. Um, she's a friend of ours, we've known her for many years. I think we met her first when she painted on Project Logan, um, and I know she's been in different art groups and she'll be talking about all the things that she has been doing. So. Welcome, Naomi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Any Squared. You guys are awesome. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, yeah, so I'm Naomi uh, Martinez. I've, I'm also known as Monstro Chica. I've, um, yeah, I've, uh, I met you at the Project Logan painting uh, a wall. And I believe that was um, that was an all girl wall that we did that one time, um, and uh, that was like still towards the beginning of me starting to paint. Well, no, not really. Maybe I had been painting maybe like three years or something like that, four years maybe. Um, so, uh, yeah, I got a chance to paint there. I'm so glad. Um, I hear that it's probably not gonna be there anymore. Um, and uh, I was uh, going through some of the, because uh, I, I made a list um, for the end of the slideshow, uh, just kind of talking about, like showing some of the places I've worked with. And uh, there's like a handful of them that are not, no longer. And it's so sad to hear when something's, um, uh, all these alternative art spaces are like disappearing and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, that's where we met. And um, so I grew up in Logan Square. Uh, I was, and I was, and I, I think, can, so will I be able to see the slideshow, Trace? Yes, I, can. I, I was gonna ask okay. you when you wanted yeah. me to do okay, the slideshow. Yeah. I'll start sharing it now. <laughs> yeah, can you? Thank you. Um, so yeah, this, I, I really had fun with this um, slideshow. Uh, I wanted to start at the beginning. Um, I promise I won't be here on that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I kind of wanted to start at the beginning because um, it, it's so important uh, to why I do what I do. And so um, this is uh, this is uh, me in second grade. Um, and uh, so my mother is the first artist that I really knew. But you know, at the time, I didn't know that. Uh, she made this dress that I'm wearing. She would sew a lot of our clothing for our photo day um, for me and my, my sister. And um, I think she did that through uh, maybe like, uh, I want to say like sixth grade. And then I was just like, okay, mom, this, this is not cool anymore. <laughs> and, um, and, but she did, she, she, she was a great, she's a great seamstress. She is a great seamstress. And my grandmother was a great seamstress. And so, um, yeah, we can, we can go to the next slide. So, um, so I grew up from the, from the time I was born through like maybe like 10 years old, I grew up uh, between three different places. And uh, those three places are um, Rio Grande Valley, Texas, South Texas, also known as El Valle, and uh, Chicago, of course, and uh, Durango, Mexico. That's where my dad is from. And so I was born in El Valle, in a little town uh, called La Yelera, the fridge. Uh, and so like, it was just known as the fridge because that's where people would go get their ice. And it's a very poor side of town. Um, and uh, my mom grew up there with her five siblings in a little one bedroom house. Uh, they lived in different places around Texas. Um, they would um, work the fields 
My grandmother grew up working the fields. She grew up, she grew up working the fields with her siblings. So I have a rich history there. Um, and I, st I still have a lot of family there. And, um, and so that's, there's a lot of generational trauma there. My grandfather was a POW during World War II with the Germans. He was, you know, there's just a lot going on there that, you know, a lot of uh, sad stories, but also joyful stories. Uh, and my mom shared that with me. So those were the first uh, things that I, the, that was the other uh, art poem that my mother shared with me, just telling her story to me. And, uh, and in Texas, you know, we were outside all the time, climbing trees, nature, eating, you know, sugar cane off the field, like I'm in the, sitting in the middle of the road, sucking on sugar cane. Uh, we'd just pick um, uh, grapes off the vine. Uh, and so that nature like stayed with me. I love that. And then uh, coming back to Chicago, I would hate it, you know, <laughs> like I'd be cooped up. And then um, my dad would take me every summer, every other summer to Mexico, um, Durango, Mexico, to his ranch over there. And then I knew nature over there and animals and all these things. Um, and then in Chicago, uh, yeah, again, just cooped up and a whole different lifestyle, right? So, so uh, I would escape through books. Like I would, you know, I, I loved books. I loved art, obviously. And um, um, I come from a domestic domestic violence household, so that was another like part of my life um, growing up with that. So um, so art was really important. Um, and uh, can you please put the next slide, please? And what was I uh, looking at? What was I? <laughs> this is what I was coping. <laughs> Uh, all that with, I was looking at uh, movies, programs, listening to music. Um, I love, like, uh, Disney films, I did not relate with the princesses. I looked at the animals. I loved the animals. I loved all the animal characters. I loved um, Sesame Street, Rainbow Bright. All this pop culture was like, you know, punky power, all this, you know, um, uh, the Peanuts gang. And I totally related with um, the adults just like being inaudible. <laughs> uh, I grew up in a time when, uh, you know, you didn't really think about how children's minds are developing and you're just, you know, ah, they're just kids, you know? And so, uh, so this is what I was looking at. Uh, there's a lot of big eyed art around. Uh, so we looked at, I, I would look at these in like the Woolworth and like see these, you know, and relate to and like connect with these these paintings or whatever they weren't paintings but you know they were photographs of paintings but and it was so strange like I I don't know why they were always like barefoot and like standing in an alley and I don't know like, <laughs> it was so strange um sad homeless like animals I don't know I don't know what was going on there <laughs> uh so so I I think um so it was like you know they were sad but they made me happy I don't know it was, it was a strange thing. Um, and of course, you know, music was always there. Dancing, I love to dance. Um, and next slide, please. Uh, and then this is high school. Um, I went to Gallery 37. I was there for as an apprentice artist. That's the top left corner. Uh, that's me and the Marwin tent. Back then they were called Marwin Foundation. And so they were instructors from Marwin Foundation. And uh, I learned pottery and I learned painting. I was there for two summers. And then the middle top is um, my drama club at, at, in high school. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, like I love theater. I loved singing, dancing. Um, and then on the top right corner, that's me at Columbia with a storyboard in my hand there. I tried animation. I tried so many things at Columbia and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, and uh, I, I was out protesting against uh, back then Proposition 187 against the anti-immigrant uh, laws that were trying to be passed back then too. So I worked on a lot of banners with friends. Um, that was something I was doing back then. I joined the band. I was singing. 
I was doing poetry. Um, and uh, this, this here, uh, this is a, a, some lyrics from a Cure song. And it's called The Catch. I don't know if anyone knows that. But um, I love The Cure. I loved, like, one of my favorite videos is uh, Close to Me. I love all that, like, kind of magical realism, like, all those kind of movies. And so I was watching a lot of movies. I was listening to a lot of music. Um, and so that, uh, that, that was really, like, influential in that time for me. Um, next slide, please. And so at Columbia, I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, but I did come away with something. <laughs> uh, this was like the first body of work that I ever did. Um, and so what I would do with my camera is like, I would just take my little sister out on these photo shoots. I would just set her up, I'd dress her up and like, um, so it came time where we had to turn in like a body of work to the teacher and have a critique and all this. And, and so I turned uh, in my photos, this isn't all of them, there's more, but so, um, so we talked about it and like, she kind of was like, hmm, okay, interesting. I, uh, I see that, uh, <laughs> so I see that, the, you know, you have this girl and like, but there's these dark, like this dark themes happening. Like there's, I see, um, I see homelessness, I see child neglect, I see child abuse. I see prostitution and I'm like, whoa, you know, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, whoa, like, wow, she sees all that. And, uh, and then she's, but in the end, she's okay, you know, because, you know, I have these nice photos of her too, you know, where she's got the little hamster and she's happy, she's smiling. And so I was just like, wow, that's interesting that she, she, this is what she saw when she saw my photographs. And then she's like, what's the name of your, your body of work or whatever? I was like, oh, well, you know, she's six. I mean, she's six years old, my sister. I don't know. She's six. She's like, oh, okay, all right, I'll take that. So that was my final. And um, and so, yeah, that was my first body of work. But I noticed, like, later on, much later on, I was like, you know, this is the first work that I, I'm, I'm using a girl at the center of my work. And so, so then... Um, that's what I noticed about that. And then, yeah, what is this, like, I, I do see this, like, why did I set her up in these, you know, I don't know, why did I do, I just thought it was cool at the time. Like, I thought it, I liked the background. I liked that raw, like, kind of, you know, city background, like, you know, but maybe there is something else going on there subconsciously. I don't know. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, and I wanted to start, like, I, I do a lot of different things, of course, um, uh, and I wanted to start with zines, uh, just because I, I, I want to talk about how, yeah, like, the first thing that I really was doing was uh, learning about stories, reading, you know, I loved uh, picture books, I loved fairy tales, all kinds of things, so, so speaking of stories, like, um, like, uh, maybe, like, this was maybe, like, excuse me, um, like 10 years ago, I did my first zine. And so I had been wanting to write about how, uh, when I met uh, Lady Pink, uh, which is an artist that um, is from the early days of New York City graffiti, uh, maybe like the late 70s or early, like maybe the 80s. And, um, and so I wanted to talk about how when I met her, after I met her, like I, she just planted this seed in me uh, that I wanted to learn graffiti, and I, you know, um, and she gave me a lot of inspiration, a lot of, like, you know, I, I had never seen a Latina um, artist before that, and so this was in high school. I was, like, a sophomore, and I had cut school, and these kids were, like, hanging out, and then some guys, like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Lady Pink's gonna be speaking at the school, the Art Institute, uh, and I was, like, wow, I want to go, you know, like, who's that? I didn't know anything about her. And so I went and uh, there was a bunch of kids cutting school and we were all there. <laughs> um, and so I saw her speak, I saw her work. So I wanted to write about that. But when I started to write about it, I started to realize all the things that were happening in that time. And then I made the connections and I just kept writing and writing. And then it just ended up being um, about my time uh, leading up to when I met her, the, then after I met her, everything that followed uh, because of that. So, um, 
Uh, so that's, and it's volume one. There's not any other volumes. I never got back to doing volume two or anything, of course, because you got so many projects, right? But, uh, but yeah, it's just this story that I really wanted to get out of me and I did, and I'm proud of myself and, and zines, I was able to do it with zines because I don't need permission from anyone to tell this story or to get this on paper or to, you know, that's what I love about zines. Um, next slide, please. And uh, so the zines that I do are daily drawings, you know, quotes, um, arts from art from my sketchbook, things like that. Um, next slide. And then I'll have like cats, uh, comics. This is a comic I did when uh, David Bowie died. So that's me and Jose in the bed talking about, you know, this is when I found out David Bowie died. So I, I talk a lot about music, like, you know, um, animals, pets I've had, memories. Um, next slide, please. And um, I just did one about um, what I was going through uh, leading up to before the shutdown before COVID uh, went full blown and we had to shut down everything. Um, and then uh, just things that are keeping me going. Um, I'm a creative spirit. I wish to continue on an artistic path and live an artful life. Uh, so that's something that I wrote when I, when I was let go from my job like a year ago and I decided to just go be a full-time artist. Um, and so then COVID hit and that kind of uh, set everything upside down, but you know, we've been, we've been making it. Um, and so I, I ended up teaching uh, sooner than, than later. So that's what I've been doing, teaching. And, um, so, and then again, like just my thoughts, musings, life is art is life. Um, so that's really, truly what I believe um, when making art. Um, Next slide, please. Uh, murals. There I am, uh, Project Logan. That's when I met Tracy and any squared everybody. Um, yeah, so I, the next thing I want to talk about was murals. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so I met, I, I did, uh, I did Pilsen Open Studios for the first time, oh, oh gosh, I'm old, like 20 years ago or something, and, um, and uh, I met these Southside uh, women artists that were doing amazing things, like they, they work with their community, like they're, you know, they were about hip hop, all five elements of hip hop, breakdancing, graffiti, um, you know, everything. So um, I met them through Pilsen Open Studios and they invited me to paint because I always, I told them I've always wanted to paint because they said, do you, do you paint? Would you ever want to paint? I'm like, yeah, let's keep in touch. So, so the first time that I painted with them is the top left um, character there with the jaguar head. That was my first time spray painting. So, I mean, I've gotten a lot better since then, but, <laughs> um, but that was my beginning uh, with them. And um, I, didn't, I didn't do the letters coming out of her hands. That was somebody that knew what they were doing. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, they kind of just let me, they're like, okay, this is how you use this. And this is, the, you know, so they kind of mentored me. Um, and it was an all girl wall, the first all girl wall uh, in the South side of Chicago. And so I was there by accident. Like I didn't even know that. I didn't know until later that that's what was going on. Um, and so, uh, so I, I worked with them for like, I, I kept painting with them. We went on a road trip to B-Girl B in Minneapolis. That's the one in the middle. That's the second year I was there. And then on the bottom left here, that's Steph and Glow and me painting at an event called Venus. Um, and that was uh, at the Abbey Pub in Chicago. That was like a whole, that was an all woman event, uh, performers, visual artists. Um, so that was a really great event. I don't think they, they did it again though. It was, I thought it was gonna keep going every year, but I don't, I don't think they did. Um, 
And then at the top, right up there, all the way at the top, that's We Are Hip Hop. That's uh, Delilah Sal Salgado. She, uh, she was working with Prozart Studios and Pilsen and they, the kids, they came up with this festival called We Are Hip Hop. And uh, they had graffiti artists, they had vendors, they had food, they had MCs come to perform. They organized it all on their own. I mean, the, the kids did this, you know. So um, I, I just went and was a guest painter. And then on the right, there's some other, um, another character I came up with on the wall. And then the bottom right corner, that's a meeting of styles. That's the second time. No, that's the first time I did meeting of styles. And I did it one other time and then I didn't. Uh, there was just so many skilled writers there. I felt a little out of place, but, but you know, I mean, hey, I did it. I was proud of myself. I got my characters up and, you know, and that's what you do. You just go and you do it. <laughs> um, and then uh, next slide, please. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, and then here I got a little better. <laughs> so um, the top left corner is Pilsen Open Studios. I ended up painting a at a friend's house and at her home. So that's one a little cat character. And the bottom left is I Still Love Her. That was an all woman wall. That was along the, before the Bloomingdale, before the 606 was there. Um, and so, yeah, so like I, I, I have like a God DJ, you know, and she's a female, she's a DJ. I have like my cat in there with the little leg warmers and stuff, little Afro pick character. And I got some, uh, some Keith Herring in there and little break dancing girl, the pyramids. Um, I, that's one of my favorite, one of my favorite um, graph pieces that I did. <laughs> um, and then on the bottom right, the, the, the three all along this corner on the right here, bottom corner is all Splash. Splash Wall is a wall in Little Village, so all women wall too. Um, and uh, two girls from Little Village down there um, been, been running this for some years now, and it's really fun. That top right um, mushroom character up there, I was really struggling with that one. Um, I have car bad carpal tunnel, um, and I can't spray as tight as I used to, <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, that's okay. Uh, I'll probably, I don't know if I'll, I'll spray paint again. I started doing just the acrylic paint murals, indoor murals now. I, I really want to do that. Um, but maybe I'll paint again. Um, but I had fun, you know, it's something that I know how to do. And, you know, I, I had a lot of fun with a lot of awesome women artists. The middle one is Phoenix. I got to also travel to Phoenix with the girls and uh, that was really special, really fun. So, uh, next slide, please. And this was the one at Project Logan. This was, uh, I was really proud of this one too. I. Uh, I did two big characters and I did that little scene in the back and I did those letters. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, I was really proud of that one. So that, that character was inspired by Yunko Mizuno. She's a Japanese artist. And then I got the little Simpsons three-eyed fish there, mutated fish and a little uh, cat chef. Um, so this was a Monsanto wall against, you know, I remember in that time they were talking about Monsanto and how they were you know, genetically modifying all these seeds and like just, you know, destroying all this natural uh, life in our food and our plants. And then I remember um, the gas was really expensive that, that summer. It was something like four, almost $5 a gallon. <laughs> so I have that little BP sign up there with $7 a gallon. Uh, that was just a little joke I added. Um, yeah, but that was that was really cool. Uh, that was the first wall I ever did in my where I grew up in Logan Square. So I was really happy about, about that too. I had never painted in Logan Square, so it was all South Side or you know. Um, I even painted out of state, like, and I still hadn't painted in my my uh, my home hood. Okay, so thank you, Project Logan. <laughs> okay, next slide. 
Oh, and here's some more. That one's Project Logan 2, top left. Bottom left is when the 606 started. And um, we, uh, it's an all girl wall too along that side. And then splash up there, that's the completed wall. And then on the bottom is a commission wall through Resurrection Project, Elevarte, and the Museum Mexican Fine Arts. Uh, Adriana Baltazar and myself uh, installed this. This is Pelan. So we painted with acrylic and Pelan material. We cut all these pieces off out and then we, we pasted them like wheat paste style. Um, and it's still there. I mean, it's not as bright, you know, the colors aren't as bright, but I mean, it's still there. And so we did a good job. <laughs> okay, next slide. Handmade stuff. I also hand make stuff. I crochet um, and I sew and I use fabric, paint on fabric and things. Next slide, please. How long am, have I? <laughs> I'm talking everyone's ear off. Okay, and then, so this is some of my crochet work. Um, and I, I paint on fabric. I create these dolls from really tiny, that, that left, bottom left corner doll is tiny. Like it's like, I think, um, I don't know if it's in a tiny little jewelry box. <laughs> uh and um yeah so this is some of my hand made work cool next slide please illustration uh so this is digital illustration i just started doing those but usually i do watercolor and ink next slide please Uh, so this is, um, I do paper dolls, uh, this is some watercolor art. Uh, again, like female character, like just centered, you know, like this is, <laughs> um, I, um, and I, again, like with, I, I, I create work through a child's lens, like I just, this is just how I see the world. And uh, on the bottom, on the, on the, very right side on the right side that rainbow and the monster and the girl walking with the cat uh the cat's kind of beat up there's garbage and like litter and stuff she's walking in a dirty alley with fences and like but you know but she's looking ahead you know she's not looking behind at you know where she's you know where she's been she's looking ahead so i think that's a really powerful piece uh and i actually exhibited that at hyde park art center um uh, and the show was called Creatures from the Concrete. So, um, yeah, so this is gouache, watercolor, ink, uh, paint markers that I use. Next slide, please. Oh, I think we, and then, yeah, just, I just put a bunch of, you know, random ones that I've done over the past. I use collage, you know, I sometimes, use like different uh, pattern paper or like you could even see some gold lace on that top one in the middle. Uh, stenciling, again, paint markers, ink, gouache, pens. Um, yeah. And they're from really tiny to like, maybe like 11 by 14 is the biggest. Next slide. And then just some more, again, a collage. Uh, there's like some paper flowers, some magazine, like cutouts, some crochet, and that left, top left one, left corner one. Uh, and it's on cardboard. And I use paint markers and different pattern papers and stuff. And then, yeah, just more ink and gouache. Uh, next slide. And again, some more. So the process for these was jelly print. Uh, so I do a jelly print with acrylic paint on the background, and then I'll uh, illustrate on the top. Like I'll just start inking, um, and then I used stamps too sometimes of different shapes. Like I use the butterfly stamps and the butterfly wing stamps, and then you know like paint markers and different things. What's a jelly print? 
Uh, so a jelly print plate is like this, it's like, a, it's called a jelly plate because it feels like jelly, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but it's G-E-L-I, jelly print. And so you, you put paint on it. And so then uh, you mix whatever colors and make whatever effects on it. Then you just stamp it onto a sheet of paper and then pull it back and then you'll get these nice um nice effect on the paper kind of not marbleized i think but like yeah so you just mix different paints on there and then it's another way of printing you know you just don't have a screen <laughs> next um slide and now I, the last thing i'll talk about is my paintings this was the first painting i ever did like 20 years ago again <laughs> uh, and again like just nature right nature fl fauna flora creatures little sidekicks in there and then the radio music and next slide please And these are early paintings. These are, I, I, I exhibit in a lot of alternative art spaces. I actually, here it was, I was part of like a festival, like a community festival. And I exhibited these at like, like a chiropractor's office or something. <laughs> uh, so this was like, yeah, um, early paintings. And again, like the sidekicks, the, the woods in the back, like the nature, you know um is in there and then uh nature sprouting from her um from her hair from her body everywhere next slide and these are newer uh so again now the sidekicks are gone right now i'm concentrating like now i'm focusing in on her and what she's about and growing evolving uh nature is still part of it um it's a little bird uh wings butterfly wings uh roots um they're looking a lot more like confident i don't know that's what i'm seeing <laughs> they're looking straight on and kind of like they know who they are kind of <laughs> next slide uh this one is called no borders uh again collage and uh this is on wood and acrylic paint paint markers um and yeah just again like just looking at things through a child's eye kind of still a woman in the center a girl in the center um and yeah just hope and next slide. Uh, the ancestors, this piece sold recently. So again, just connecting with our ancestors, with our culture. This was a Dia de los Muertos piece. Uh, I used some stenciling and paint markers here. And uh, yeah, so again, nature is still very, uh, relevant in my pieces. Next slide, please. And uh, La Muralista, this, this sold early before, yeah, I mean, during COVID actually. Uh, again, um, I'm kind of just admiring muralists now <laughs> and painting <laughs> about them. So I love the confidence uh that that i felt when i would do when i did uh the art on the walls outside and feeling connected to the community um so yeah so she's doing the this was a dia de los muertos piece too and so just an you know an ode to like all the muralistas out there doing their thing next slide please And Todas Libres, um, All of Us Free. So this is a, a little bit of collage. The butterflies are collage. The rest is all paint markers and acrylic. Um, so, so yeah, this is like my hope for that, you know, for all of us women artists hustling and, you know, 
that we be that we will be free one day um and living off our hands right like just <laughs> being successful artists and um so yeah this is my hope for like all my comrades you know all artists next slide and um healing uh, most importantly art has been for me and and this is what i see for the future with my work uh, and uh, just continuing to to do work that um that helps people feel connected to something you know where, where you're not alone in your feelings and your joy and your sadness and um, i love that now uh society and young people are so much in their power that they're speaking out about a lot of things and calling out uh you know these be, this behavior that won't be tolerated from people and you know that we need to be accountable for the way that we're treating people in our community um and um yeah and that you will be held accountable in the community if you're being hurtful with your family with your children so like this is the type of work that i want to be doing and i'm i'm just you know happy that i'm i kept going with my work <laughs> and that i've grown and i'm evolving still and learning still <laughs> next slide please and these are just all the this is my education right here you know like and all the supporters um and here in chicago so i just wanted to share you know for people so that they can know that you know these organisms some uh, maybe a handful are no longer but um but almost all of them are still you know in chicago working and offering uh workshops or offering services uh, uh, there's calls for art there's um, you know i mean there's I, i'm a community and self-taught artist uh, mostly i did learn some things at columbia college but you know I, I i would say the majority of what i the work that i'm doing now was from community and from um yeah from just being curious and getting myself out there so uh, but I want to thank everybody for being here and <laughs> and thank you to all these awesome people that are still doing fine work in Chicago for artists and um, the community. Thank you, <laughs> Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yay. Um, I'm going to just float through your slides for a minute and then we'll... And if people have questions, go ahead and ask Naomi. I just have more of a comment <clears throat> that I, I there was some, it was really cool to see, the, I guess, the Columbia photo series. Of, mm -hmm. I guess of your, niece, was your, of your niece, right? Or what? Um, yeah, my sister, my little sister. Little mm -hmm. sister. And so, but it's interesting because even the, <clears throat> the perspective of those images, I feel like kind of mirrors the per perspective you use in your like work now like as far as with the women like there's this yeah like even like this larger than life kind of characterhood or there's kind of exaggerated features how you're like setting up the composition but now you're doing that with graph and how you do that i don't know i think there's a really sh like just seeing back to back there's or are you in this thing there's a really strong correlation i really love seeing that so that was more of a comment thank you yeah i do see that <laughs> i see that now <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask, um, what's the biggest painting that you've done? Because I know that you've done the murals and everything, but like, have you made something like big on canvas? Why not? <laughs> uh, on canvas? Yeah, like what's no, the biggest that you've done? I would say the biggest one that is the one that I did 20 years ago. <laughs> I just, oh. I have not done a big canvas again like that. Uh, yeah. Only the walls like yeah, yeah the walls and um yeah but i i should <laughs> yeah because i like how you, you tell a story pretty much and it'd be cool to see it in an mm -hmm. even bigger thing too but i know that you've done the murals i've seen them but i don't know like <laughs> when with the, in the canvas i feel like you would take even more time to get so much more detail and do more stuff that 
just yeah <laughs> and i think if i if i went bigger like i think that's my problem too like i i get i kind of get small and detailed even if it's a big canvas <laughs> Yeah, because they gave it watercolor because I know you do the watercolor and gouache, you know, that'd be cool. Yeah, and um, so I got to That's something that I, I do want to try and do a big canvas now, right? Because like, you know, my work has it has evolved, you know, the style mm -hmm. has evolved. The So I, I could probably this is probably this one right here is probably the biggest I've done recently which is right behind me too can you yeah. see me are you can you guys yeah, see, I can yes. see it oh, okay <laughs> and yeah so this is a this is not huge you could tell <laughs> but yeah um and i think that's where i get like i get lost in those little details and like i gotta like step back and be like no like it could be a big detail <laughs> you know like yeah. Yeah. yeah i was doing a lot of watercolor too and then once you did it on the mural then it's like a different thing you know, yes like, yeah you know, man different you power did. to it i love the mask man those are dope those mm -hmm. are dope thank you thank you no, well you inspired <laughs> me man like i, like, I want to do like i want to be like her i want to be like her awesome. um, i'm still watching i'm still following you you know i love everything yeah, you do man. all the thank watercolor you. and the detail you know the stories that you tell thank you <laughs> Does anyone else have questions? And I, by the way, Natalia is going to be uh, doing a talk January 20th. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'm already nervous. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's a good crowd. It's a very mm -hmm. nice, friendly environment. Um, I've, I've got a question. Well, I've got some comments and a question. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Hi. Oh, hello. Uh, well, first of all, I. I have family down in the RGV. So when you were talking about the valley. Really? Um, yeah, I have relatives in Far, McAllen, Mission, and Harlington. No way. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Um, McAllen. Yeah, I know McAllen too. <laughs> yeah, and growing up in Chicago, my dad would go to Mexico every year and we would stop in Harlington and McAllen. So I'm you know, familiar with the trek down to Mexico and we'd go to Matawala, San Luis. So I, wow. I, I identify with a lot of what you were saying. And, and so I kind of yeah. feel a kinship with you in that. I just wanted to comment on your work. <laughs> um, I love your colors. They're bold, but not overtly bold. They're more of a muted bold. And I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I'm, I'm drawn. I mean, the images are great, but I'm really drawn also by your use of color. And you were talking about your images and you kept saying she and she and she, and you said she is evolving. If you had to define she, you know, how would you define she, you know, right now? You know, who is uh, she at the moment? <laughs> uh, she is looking ahead. <laughs> um, she is putting all her energy into her art she is yeah just uh i uh and and you know it is me right these are like little these are coming out of me they're alter egos maybe i don't know they're what i wish i could be or maybe what i was um when i was doing the old cheese <laughs> and um you know uh yeah and so but more than anything like I want it to be a universal feeling, you know, like I want, you know, women to connect to it. And I hope that they do. I think that they do uh, because I, I think it's that inner child that we're always healing and we're always thinking back to like, you know, um, uh, cause I, I know like in my, I lost myself for a while. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I wasn't doing art. Like I wasn't, what was that? Well, how would I explain it? It was like, I, I kind of was feeling like, oh, why am I, why am I still doing this? Like, this is childish, you know, this is, you know, I should just concentrate on just, you know, I got to get a house. I got to do, you know, these pressures that we get from society, you know, like, well, when are you going to get a house or when are you going to have kids? And like, it's just like, you know, I think I lost myself trying to fulfill that. I like trying to be, be like other people. And then when it didn't work out for me, um, I, I just, I, 
I still had my art and I was like, okay, well, what am I doing? This brings me happiness. <laughs> Why am I trying to find happiness in these other things or trying to fit in or trying to, you know, and uh, I'm glad that I kept going. I'm glad that I was like, you know what? I, I, this is what, this is what helps me. And um, I'm going to keep going. And so I did, I, I just kept working. I kept working and um and like that's where i'm at that's where she's at you know she's looking ahead she's she's going to you know give her energy to her art and keep forging ahead <laughs> yeah you had you had mentioned a, a confidence but i was going to say i also when i see the work or maybe taken all together i also see a calmness that seems to echo maybe it's unintentional but something strikes me as there being some kind of sense of calm you know no matter what is going on in the picture there you know, I don't know if it's the color or the images but there's this calmness I mean there's the confidence but there's also a calmness that I see projected and I don't know if that's unintentional or maybe that's just me reading into it uh yeah you know I don't like doing smiling girls uh I like them to be yeah like just, um, what would the word be? <laughs> Maybe they're, they're just, yeah, they're at, they're peaceful. Like they're just, you know, they're not, if you, you could look at them, they're not really smiling. They're just, I guess you could say they're at peace. They're, or they're thinking or they're, you know, uh, they're thinking, I think they're maybe just, um they they i feel like they're uh comfortable in their skin and they're just you know exactly That's yeah exactly it. <laughs> like this is me right <laughs> exactly well, yeah thank you for indulging my questions i don't want to monopolize too much time but i really love the work and like i said the colors and it's just beautiful. I'm, I'm glad. And, and I think the handmaids are amazing, too. I'd like to see some more of your handmaids, but they're really nice. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're My uh, paisano, paisano <laughs> from Texas. <laughs> and, and I grew up in Logan Square. So when you said you went to school in Logan Square, I'm like, where, where, where? So I went to, I went to Avondale. Did you go to Avondale? Oh, okay. I went to yeah. Gaithy, so, yeah. Oh, okay. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for thank doing the talk. I, I, I really enjoyed it, and I, I appreciate that you did all the background, too. It, that was pretty cool. Cool. Thanks. Are there more questions, everyone? I joined a little bit late, but um, I... I oh, hi. Hi, I, I uh, met Naomi um, in, in Berwyn where, um, you know, she got super involved and was very generous and, in, in uh, you know, offering her skills as an artist um, at like a pop-up gallery. And I saw, I thought you had like a huge uh, canvas piece in there on that wall. Um, it was like, was it cats or something? And it was pink. Was yes, that, that was a, that was actually a collab. That was um, okay. my friend Kelly and me. We both worked on that one. You're right. Okay. That was on paper. That was a, that was a big one. Um, and then <laughs> she, I don't know if you didn't did include it in here, but like the, I still haven't seen the Bourbon Public Library mural. That was like a huge mural. Yes, um, I did not it, get to add that's that on there. Gigantic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Yeah, and again, it's like a wall, but on canvas. Yeah, I need to, I need to do some canvases. I think. <laughs> yeah, and I do. Uh, I but love yeah. your whimsical. I do love your whimsical, um, you know, elements and like the detail, right? Because that is like something you constantly like rediscover little things. And even when you did that mural, <laughs> and I saw like just glimpses of it, um, it's just like you know layers and layers of things that you can discover as you're going back to it. Um, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> in the other work too, but of course, when you like create those big pieces, um, you know, have much more freedom to do that. Um, yeah. And and I just have to do a shout out because I just loved it so much. Because when you and Alex did uh, the pop up show um, in Berwyn, we had like this little temporary pop up space 
um, yeah. the empty forefront. And you, you were so generous with like all these families and people coming in, helping them learn little printmaking and like oh, yes, doing demos so on fun. the printing um, capabilities <laughs> and stuff. And even just like impromptu drawing on the wall, like a gigantic like community and we're all together. It's just like, to me, I just find it like that it just kind of naturally flows out and yes. <laughs> you're just, you know, generating, uh, generating original um, illustration, you know, um, on the spot too. <laughs> on the spot. It's, it's, it's amazing. So um, I always love seeing your work and it's really cool hearing the background, um, you Thank know, where you. you came from and seeing how you see your work evolving. I do like the yes. little <laughs> Uh, the little what? The like little sidekicks. I do like the little. Oh sidekicks. yeah. <laughs> it's a bummer that they are like being kicked out. <laughs> I know, right? She doesn't need them anymore. <laughs> she kicked them out. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean that was like how I started. Yeah, like, um, and I find it interesting that they all of a sudden they disappeared, and it was just like, okay, like, what does that mean? Does that mean that? I don't need that anymore or need them anymore or like I don't know it was just interesting <laughs> um and now I even draw them on their own like they're not they're not together but yeah maybe I should do a piece again with them together uh, thank you Sabine <laughs> I have a question so yeah I've been noticing you've been doing a lot of workshops and a lot of different things in the last six months um, what, how are you feeling about being a teaching artist and how is that affecting your work too? Um, yeah, so, you know, like when I would do the workshops, um, it, it's funny because it would, it would be for kids, but then the adults wanted to be an editor. <laughs> so it was like, um, I really like that. I, I love that about teaching, um, in community where, you know, it starts off for the youth, the young people, uh, but then everybody gets involved. And that's what I love about that. Um, and now like with COVID, I got back into teaching. Um, and, you know, it's really sad right now, like what the kids are going through, like not being able to, to be in that, in that um, you know, be together. Um, and so I, I just check in with them, you know, I'm always checking in with them. Um, and it, it, like, it's, I haven't done it in a while. So it's, I'm kind of still also like kind of breaking into it and getting back into it. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think it's an important time to be teaching because you're not just teaching, you're also um, helping with that social, emotional, part of you know their day or um and I think all the teachers not just art teachers you know but um so it's been interesting I mean uh it, I don't I it's not the same you know <laughs> obviously um but yeah so I guess I'm I'm doing okay uh, I wish I can't wait till we're able to be together again you know but of course you know we have to wait <laughs> so does anyone else have any questions for um naomi i have one another one is where does your name come from your monstro chica right <laughs> yeah oh you cut out on right uh, Jose, one day he was just like, you're always drawing monsters and girls, you know, you're like a monster chick. You're, you're, you're a monster chica. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds so cool. I was like, actually, then I just started signing that. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how it started. Because <laughs> he was making fun of me. <laughs> but I was like, I like that. I actually like that. And then I'm like, I, sometimes I think like, um, so I'm going to have this name forever, <laughs> but I'm kind of like, uh oh, like I'm going to be like really old and people are still going to be like, <laughs> well, some, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I still call people by their 
their art names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But thank you so much. And I this like the slideshow, like I was like going through and I was like, wow, but wait. And I just kept adding, I was like, wait, but there was this and there was, you know, and then it's probably just ten kind of many things that you haven't had <laughs> on there. <laughs> Yeah, no, there was. I was like, okay, no, that's too much. But I, I didn't. I, that was the first time that I ever shared those photographs, actually. But like, I, I have never shared those with anybody. <laughs> They're just kind of in my. Yeah, I had. I was like, I should. I, I was looking at them. I was like, man, you know, like I remember her critique. I remember, and then I, you know, I was like, I should share that. Like that's that's a body of work that I've done, and that I, mm -hmm. you know, so. Sneak peek have, for everybody. <laughs> I have one question, just because um, you started using Procreate, right? Oh, um, yes. <laughs> you, but you, I see you so much as like a tangible artist, like someone who actually likes to touch and have like the layers. So how does it feel like, where do you see Procreate maybe going into this, like going in the virtual space where so many artists are rendering something on the computer and you know, digitally versus like the physical area? Um, yeah, like it's, it's, I'm starting to think about how I can make it just look more like my style, like, you know, and I think I'm going to have to use a lot of texture because <laughs> I think that's what I, you know, with the paint and the gouache and the watercolor, like I just have to find brushes that are like, you know similar that give that same effect and then like then I'll be happy <laughs> but right now I'm not very happy yeah like it's very flat it's very like I've used some kind of gradient but I haven't figured out the texture yet like I gotta find there's so many brushes you know <laughs> so yeah so I, I I want to keep working on that um but yeah like I I see so much amazing work out there like with Procreate and digital that I love and it's mostly you know children's illustration you know but uh gosh I wish I could yeah some of this stuff is amazing and then you know and then the animations and everything like it's just but yeah nope still working <laughs> on that but I I yeah I know what you mean it's it's a it's very different but I think if I figure out like how to find those brushes that give that same effect, you know. And, and there's probably like different applications for that too, right? Because it's like, well, if you do like illustrations or for a book or for like a mood or a scene or a sign, sign scene or anything like that, but like as an art buyer, like someone I, you know, I like to have art. It's so nice to have something that someone physically touched, like, you know, I understand mm. that people also like buy like prints, you know, and digital prints oh, and things yeah. like that. But I always love it when it's like I can see like the pen stroke or I can see, you know, brush or the collage or something like that. So it's just interesting, like the different mediums when you see artists going more procreate. It's like, but would you use that for sketching or would you use it to actually create original work that you're not gonna put on paper or mm. canvas? So it's just interesting to see where artists yeah. go in the physical and the in the digital. I haven't printed anything that I've done on Procreate. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd probably just use it for digital. I don't know if I, yeah, unless it looks very, yeah, like I said, like if I can get the same effect with texture and all that, and it looks nice on a print, then I'll be, I'll print it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Naomi. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we're going to wrap so everything great. up. And thank you. That was a great talk. And, um, <laughs> and next week. Check social media for future Zooms and future streams. Next week, we're featuring Mr. Pinta Moro.